Nice here. All right, this um, this is the Jamaica Square <laughs> meeting for November the third at 7 p.m. The call to order. First order of business is a call for any late additions to the agenda. And as it happens, I've had a pretty busy week since I wrote this agenda, so I've got three, actually four, three and a half <laughs> additions to the agenda. Um, I need we need to set the date for the post termination hearing. All of us we need to set the date for the date for the garage interviews, and um, I have to discuss the snowblower and then um, on, on, on the road commission. So those are the ones I'm adding. Does anyone else have an addition to the agenda? Uh, yeah, I would like to add an, an executive session possibly at the end regarding the water plan. Um, let's see, we'll add that as a possibility with we'll question that then. Uh, And also, I want to give a uh, short report on a connectivity summit meeting that I attended. <coughs> connectivity summit. Did you talk about that last week? No, that's not. Is that another meeting? The one in Dover. I don't remember where you went. Connectivity. It's about fiber optic. Oh, I missed one of them, I think. Uh, Post-term hearing, job interviews, road commissioner. Oh, it's snowblower. Snowblower. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that an extra pen? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Just short, sure. Uh, from the health officer about uh, burn, outside burn, particularly of uh, barrels and uh, garbage. Emphasize the we had a, a, a call fire department and want to re-emphasize again we need to have visible addresses address signs visible from the road we spent a lot of time looking for this place we never ever found any numbers at all on the building anywhere else so just want to hit that one more time it's kind of a running thing I have all righty then. So, moving right along, the uh, next order of business is to approve the minutes of the October 23rd Select Board meeting and the October 12th Special Meeting. These minutes were sent out to everybody uh, electronically. Anybody have any questions about the October 23rd Select Board meeting that we held on the 23rd of October? Select <laughs> that we accept the minutes as written for the October 23rd. Second. second. I have a second. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, they will be accepted as written. Do you vote? Hmm? Do you vote? Vote. Who we did? Oh, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> when we hired her, she didn't know she was having to babysit me, and she suddenly learned over time. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now we have the pass. Thank you. Um, we also had the special meeting that we had on October 12th. Any uh, questions about those minutes? Any corrections, deletions? Hearing none, we we'll have a motion. I move <laughs> that we accept <laughs> the minutes of October the 12th. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any, uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Second. We have a second. Uh, any further discussion? 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I abstain because I wasn't at that meeting. So I have an aye. 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 Two ayes. Uh, we have enough to pass. Three. Make it three because you got to have three. I'll pass. say aye as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we'll do approve the timesheets for the town office, Mr's Highway, and Transfer Station, as is our custom at the end of the day. Meeting so you guys don't have to wait around when we do that. Same thing with the select board orders. Um, earlier this evening, we had a presentation for the new town plan, and it is our responsibility to vote on whether or not um, we approved of your new town plan. So I would entertain a motion to that effect. I move that we accept the town plan with great thanks. I second that. Any, do I have a second? Or do any further discussion? Aside from another thank you for me. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, ma'am. Well, that passes. Whew. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Now, um, on the next item, we had the Planning Commission wanted to discuss the new energy initiative. And I think, Chris? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the uh, state recently passed Act 174, which is a voluntary expansion of the uh, re of regional energy planning. And they established uh, certain goals. Uh, I'm going to read them because uh, I can't remember. Uh, they want to reduce total energy consumption per capita by 15% by 2025 and by more than one third by 2050. They want to meet 25% of the remaining energy need for renewable resources by 2025 and 40% by 2035 and 90% by 2050. And uh, there's three uh, end use sector goals for 2025, 10% renewable transportation, 30% renewable buildings, and 67% renewable electric power. So basically, uh, the state uh, wants us to plan for conversion to renewable energy. They're emphasizing electric cars, which I'm far from certain is going to be the final uh, transportation technology that we adopt. But, but for now, they're first out of uh, date, so to speak. And uh, uh, very uh, ambitious. Uh, heating uh, uh, conservation goals. And while Act 174 is voluntary, municipalities and regions <coughs> meeting uh, these enhanced, with plans to meet these enhanced standards, will receive uh, substantial deference before the Public Service Board with respect to conservation and specific policies that are coming. And I want to read what substantial deference uh, means. Land conservation measures or policy shall be applied in accordance with its terms unless there is a clear and convincing evidence that other factors outweigh the application of the measure or policy. And if we don't have a Act 174 uh, compliant energy plan, uh, then we just get due consideration. Mm -hmm. So basically what this means is if uh, we want to keep uh, wind towers off the ridge lines. We better have a Act 174 compliant plan. Uh, the uh, uh, state uh, allocates goals to each one of the regions, and the regions come up with a regional plan which further allocates energy saving and renewable goals to the municipalities. Uh, Wyndham's done that. We received our allocation. And uh, we've started work on an update to the energy section of our town plan uh, to meet it. Uh, and this is also the case, the place where we should make a strong case, and I'm assuming we want to make a strong case, uh, to keep windmills, commercial wind, off, off, the, uh, off our ridge lines. Uh, so, among other things, we have to come up with uh, some 2,026 megawatts hours of uh, renewable energy by 2050, which is going, to, which we can meet with solar. I mean, the, the goals aren't that far out. I, I don't 
the only reason why they can't be met. Um, the, uh, the state plan is based on a state uh, consolidated uh, energy plan of 2016, which to my way of thinking isn't quite complete. They, they mention uh, energy uh, storage and, uh, as a, an important and critical factor, but in the regional plan it's, it's not mentioned. And all the experts in, in the power industry all agree that without energy storage, uh, you know, large-scale integration of renewable, you know, solar and, and wind towers just isn't going to happen. The fluctuations in the power level just drive the utilities crazy. And <clears throat> so you have to have batteries of one kind or another to store that energy and draw it at a more uh, constant rate. Mm -hmm. So what, what I think this means is, and, and there's a, a good reason why it wasn't included, the, the technology just isn't as mature as the, as the solar panels are. Mm -hmm. um, but it will be, and we're going to have to keep rewriting this plan over and over again as, it, as the, the, the technologies advance. So our, our current uh, bogey is uh, August of 2018, and we, we'll meet that. This is not going to be difficult. The uh, um, Marjorie Major, who's on the Regional Council and, for, and is the head of energy planning, is receive funding from the state to provide technical assistance to the municipalities. She requires a letter pledging that all the things that I said we had we were going to do uh, and uh, to provide technical assistance. Most of the, uh, the region's plan is pretty self-explanatory, but one part of it cites a uh, energy planning model. It's called the LEAP model. And, uh, it's not really clear to me <laughs> what they're doing. What so was I that again? leap, leap. Yeah, okay. uh, I forget what L stands for, but it's energy assistance planning. Uh, I, I, I'd like some technical help understanding that model before we commit to the things it says we we should do. So hence the letter requesting her technical assistance. This is the letter of the uh, November sixth. Yes. So that and just for the uh, for the rest of the slide, board, the letter um, is, it, is explaining what he's talking about, um, and they said the approval of an update of our existing town plan by July 2018, as he said. Um, bottom line is we have initiated development of a draft plan and anticipate its completion well in advance of the August 2018 deadline. We anticipate the technical assistance. Be very useful in your terms of side by beta, Chris and myself. So that gives her the go ahead. Is that yes. correct? Yes. My understanding to start looking at the assistance model. To help me look at it. Right. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. But, but we're not talking about generating anything, we're talking about looking into yes. getting the yeah. assistance to generate. Plus, you know, she's the one that's going to have to approve our plan, so mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little schmoozy would hurt too. Sure. <laughs> Any, any questions? What are, what are some of the things you're thinking about? Uh, we want to establish that we can meet these goals with, uh, uh, with solar and not, not rely on wind. Mm -hmm. Except maybe if, uh, they, well, they divide wind into large scale uh, uh, industrial, small scale industrial. We don't want any of that. And, and residential. I don't think we have any objection to residential, except they're noisy. So, on a case by case basis, it's very new technology. I'm sure you're aware of where the the um, they're not windmills; they're vibrating rods, which well, cut down significantly on the appearance and the noise. Well, so. the um, uh, so. Uh, we have to uh, tell a good story on how we're going to meet uh, the, these goals with, with solar. Uh, I would like to put in there uh, energy storage as well because we're going to have to have 
uh, batteries, uh, both you know in-house, you know behind the meter uh, batteries plus distributed batteries uh, to store energy from uh, small-scale um, uh, generators that, uh, that we might locate. On uh, small scale is 15 kW, 150 kW, and the um, uh, uh, we have to address uh, um, how we're going to conserve heat uh, for our uh, energy with heating. They're making a big push for uh, uh, converting to wood pellets. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that's. And nearly half of our residents heat with wood, and it's not clear whether they use wood stoves or, you know, wood boilers. But uh, I, I would say we're already uh, uh, doing a substantial job there. Uh, uh, converting to wood it has a yeah, it's a very important caveat attached to that. Uh, wood has just as much CO2 as oil. So, if you don't accompany that with, uh, you know, forestry practices that ensure you have enough trees growing to absorb the CO2 you're generating, uh, it's, it's, it's worse, really, than, say, uh, propane or natural gas. And we do that. I mean, we've, we've got forest land, uh, um, considerable forest land, so, but it's important to make the, the case that we have to maintain that in order for wood to be uh, a, a viable heating source. A lot of the newer stoves, wood stoves, have converters on them. Uh, that, that's primarily, I think, to help with the CO absorption. There, there, there <coughs> are just uh, uh, high efficiency cordwood boil. Uh, uh, burners, they're, they're boilers, or they're, you have to have a, some sort of heat exchanger uh, to accompany with them. But they get the same efficiency as uh, as the pellets, and we won't run the cordwood sellers out of business if we use those. But they have the downside of being expensive, so they're really probably more suited for new construction or you know substantial remodeling. Uh, <clears throat> and then there's transportation. Uh, and the, when they're pushing electric cars, uh, <coughs> I, I think what we want to say is we'll monitor technology and do what you know seems best at the time. Uh, to China. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, our, 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 I, I imagine our our residents' commuting distances are such that a hundred mile radius probably is kind of marginal. Uh, and which is basically what the electric cars get now. Uh, battery technology is there's there's potential maybe to double that with the lithium if they can solve the uh, exploding lithium ion battery oh, problem. Oh, well. <laughs> get to that fast. And, and it, so you have a pure lithium battery, you can double the, the capacity. That might work. But there's fuel cells and. Uh, Biodiesel and probably oh ammonia is being considered as a fuel. So there's there's a lot of other things that could emerge. Uh, <clears throat> I think the approach that the planning board would recommend is 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 being one of promotion and education. I, we can't tell people what kind of cars to buy, but we can certainly make everybody aware of what sort of. Uh, Technology is available, and and one final thing I'd like to really emphasize is you know, all these policies and plans <clears throat> aren't going to do it. What's going to do it is the um, falling prices of renewable energy. The the uh, solar is now at the tipping point, and people are betting that it's going to maybe be half of what natural gas is right now. And when that happens, uh, that, that spread is enough to uh, uh, call, uh, enable uh, innovative uh, financial plans, leasing and uh, the like, so that 
people can convert to solar and put arrays up on their roof or a small array in the field <coughs> also for no, no money down, no capital, and still get a reduced rate. Also, they're it. working on shingles for the roof. That yeah, are the yeah, solar roofs. And film, and film technology for windows. So there's a lot yeah. of new stuff coming down. We have a prevalence of staining seam roofs in the uh, uh, in the area, including mine. Uh, if, if they come up with a film you can put on the on top of the metal, that would be I yeah. think really. Well, they have a film you can put on the windows. Yeah. I don't think it's in mass production. But. So. Because uh, one of the things that it was written in the town plan is um, how uh, having it on your roof is very. Uh, an expensive deal, and why a lot of people are not. We, you able know, to do we, that. we have with manufacturing panels. Right? Yeah. So many. Other, well, it's not going to happen unless there, there's a. Yeah. You know, the, the cost goes the cost. low enough so that uh, you know the, the people can do it without having to put down a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But we, everybody thinks that's going to happen, including me and and. Uh, I don't think when it does happen, I don't think there's going to be any problem meeting these goals at all. So this, the project right now that we just agreed to is really, you think you can have the plan ready by 2018, not necessarily exercising much difference right now. We're just talking about the education component, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and, uh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we got to discuss in the plan where, where we think we're going. But, mm -hmm. but as far as action items, you know, it's going to be education, promotion, we, I mean, there's uh, a lot left to be done. Yeah. And, and the end of your presentation? Oh, and the other thing, right, I mean, it's sort of self-defense, the plan. I mean, the, the part about keeping the wind, you know, commercial wind away is, you know, we got to have a plan that meets the WR. If, if the WRC uh, approves our plan, then the state approves it. So what we have to have by next summer is a plan that the WRC approves. That have you bounced that through the community? Do we have any support or, um, against, for and against this plan? I suspect that there's some controversy. Uh, no, the answer is no. But we just, this has just recently come up. Okay, so, yeah. uh, what, we had an energy committee when we were uh, writing, updating the town plan, and I'll reactivate that to see what they think. Mm -hmm. uh, our, we have a, our, one of our action items is a town survey for next summer. We should put a lot of energy questions in that to mm -hmm. get some feedback from the community. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to, to express it because I think there I've heard others talking about the positive aspects of wind energy, and so I'm sure there's some back and forth to be had between now and then. Well, maybe <clears throat> if people don't care <laughs> whether when you're in <laughs> Europe, it's just all over the place. France yeah. is loaded, Spain is loaded, but there are new technologies that yeah. will make it more appealing. I think. Well. And there are better places to put it. Uh, in the beginning of your presentation, what, aside from protecting against <coughs> industrial windmills, yeah. what, what, what will happen if we don't do this? It would what? If we don't do this, what would happen oh. because <coughs> the possibility of windmills? If, if, if somebody like, well, the, I, I should say, the WRC hasn't, uh, allocated us, or they've given us zero as a goal for wind power. There's very little land in Jamaica that, on the ridge line that isn't either conserved or a conservation area. I think it's four acres that are suitable for industri large scale industrial wind and 138 for uh, moderate size uh, industrial wind. So, uh, but if somebody like Iberdola, who wanted to build the windmills in, uh, in Wyndham, were to buy up some land on a ridge line and put, say we're going to put some windmills up there, they'd have to get the Public Service Board to, to approve it. And if we have a plan that says we're going to meet our goals some other way and we don't want the windmills because it's inconsistent with our 
natural resources section and our economic development section and you know other parts of our plan will get this substantial deference criteria. Otherwise, we get what you know what due consideration, which means I don't know what it means, but not as much consideration as the substantial deference. So on that on that very question, then speaking to what you're talking about, does the fact that Jamaica does not have zoning impact on that? Uh, At this stage, you could put up a windmill next door. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, <laughs> is, it, so is, is part of your process taking a look at the um, the palatability of zoning, new zoning regulations? I. That would be an interesting thing. <laughs> we haven't talked about that. <laughs> Mike? That, that would be a, probably a major item. A major. It's been shot down for years. <laughs> I, I throw that out because I'm thinking it's very little control we have if somebody buys you know, the top of the mountain. And then they want to throw something. Yeah, out. Well, yeah, if they. For residential uh, systems, either wind or solar, I don't, we don't have anything to say, I, I don't think, but for big, uh, for uh, industrial size things, they have to get the planning, uh, public service board, excuse me, the public service board to approve it. Mm -hmm. And there we do have something to say. And there's a difference between a substantial difference yeah. versus due, due consideration. Gotcha. You guys got a lot of work ahead of you. And you thought you finished. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you sit back on that your was Silly. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I mean, it sounds like a, a lot of work involved. Um, they put out a template, mm -hmm. which we could just, and with fill in the blanks type of thing, and we could fill in the blanks and be done in a couple of days. But if we want to make our own plan, it will take. Well, you guys certainly did a good job of the last piece of business you guys did. This one might be a little bit more controversial, but it's something to take a look at. Um, one of the things that I'm sure that I know it's going through my mind since we talk about solar energy is finding a component in there that somebody will pay for our legal expenses and exploring it. Just a thought. Because we spent a lot of money trying to figure out if that $1.98 we were going to get from the last people who asked us to pick up solar. And it didn't seem to be a good plan for this size of the community. So there's some of that, that that's going to have to be just, uh, worked out as well. Well, listen, thank you very much. Is there anything else you guys want to say to this? It sounds like a lot of work. Uh, good luck. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is going to get, this, this letter is going to get us started. I'm, yes. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have, um, the next item of business is the, uh, Lou would like to speak to the new garage update. Or an update on the new garage. Okay. I'll stand because, you can see. Um, Lexa asked me to do this because obviously she's on, on vacation. And Lexa and I have been working together on uh, monitoring the construction process uh, of, the, of the garage. Um, the garage is substantially complete. About uh, a week or so ago, we had uh, the fire marshal come in to do his inspection. We had the state electrical inspector come in and do his inspection. And both of them um, uh, gave us passing grades and they're gonna be issuing a occupancy certificate uh, that, that does allow us to occupy it right away, although we don't have a formal uh, certificate yet. Um, I was at the building yesterday and I, Notice that the uh, uh, plumbing appears, I mean, the heating system appears to be working. Uh, I called Keith this, this morning and he told me that uh, both the, uh, the main building and the offices are up to uh, the thermostat and everything appears to be working there. That was sort of the last thing that had to be done. Um, however, what I did notice is that the trucks weren't in the building. And I said, why aren't the trucks in the building? And he said, uh, because when they drive in, the, uh, the CO2 uh, detector goes off and it triggers a fire alarm. And it's happened six or seven times already. So uh, he explained to me that uh, 
the fire marshal likes to see a certain level of sensitivity to the CO2 detectors, and it's, it's relatively uh, high sensitivity. And what's going to happen is the company has to come in and readjust the sensitivity uh, so that they can have the, 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 the uh, trucks in there for two or three minutes uh, emitting their, their normal emissions while they're moving the trucks in and out. Of course, they have to warm up the trucks a little bit, get the oil, the oil pressure up and things like that. So it takes two to five minutes to get the truck ready before it's ready to back out. So anyways, <laughs> if you drive by and you see the trucks out front, you'll notice that it's because they're still working on the CO2 adjustment for the sensitivity there. There's also one other minor issue. One of the doors doesn't close quite, quite right. Uh, I guess when you trigger it, it doesn't know whether to go up or down. So uh, they've got that problem needs to be rectified. But uh, pretty much the, uh, the building is ready for occupancy, um, which is a good thing. Um, one of the things we talked to you about a couple of weeks ago was um, digging the holes for the trees that need to be put there as part of the uh, agreement we had with, with Michael and Enrique for the, uh, uh, for the septic system. And uh, uh, we staked them out, or Michael staked them out, and uh, we went, Lexa and I went last week and looked at them, and we adjusted them a little bit to get them a little bit farther away from the building so that there'd be room to drive a vehicle back there if needed. Um, but the stakes are ready to go, and we're waiting on uh, Keith to uh, dig the holes, and hopefully that will happen, uh, happen soon. Um, but while we were talking about the, the location of that, another issue uh, was discussed, and that is the, um, the trimming of the tree, of some of the trees. One of the things we didn't anticipate when the building was built is that some of the current trees were going to overhang the, uh, the roof, and of course that's not good. Um, the problem is, in our easement agreement we had with Michael and Enrique, um, there's a line of trees, they're, up, they're called line trees, they're trees that are on the border between properties, and it was agreed that the row of white pines on the property line between the grantor and the grantee shall be left standing and undisturbed. Um, the problem is, by trimming some of those trees, it will disturb the, uh, those trees. So the question is, 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 how do we deal with that? And what we're going to do with, uh, with, with their agreement is we're going to let the, uh, uh, Michael Longo, who's going to trim the trees, know that um, we want to trim them as little as we have to. Uh, however, if they get, do get trimmed too much and it, and it kills them, then um, uh, basically the, the next part of the agreement says, um, uh, if the trees need to be removed during construction, maintenance, repair, or access to the property, these trees will be replaced or moved to a new location. Obviously, we're not going to move those to a new location. So the, what they wanted to point out is that uh, should the trimming of these trees cause the trees to die, which usually happens you know, a few years later, it doesn't happen you know, immediately, then uh, the lease agreement we have with them would state that we would need to replace those trees with some other, uh, some other tree. And what they asked me to do tonight is to just inform you of that so that you're aware of the situation and ask you to put it in your minutes so that, that you understand it, that if that does indeed happen, that they will need to be replaced. So any future select board would understand that that uh, commitment was made. So uh, I wanted to bring that up to you tonight and uh, See what you thought. Can I ask a question? Sure. I don't know very much about trees, but I've certainly seen trimmed trees. I don't remember them killing them. How, how bad do you have to trim a tree if yeah. it's fatal? I think uh, these trees, um, uh, because they've been trimmed so much already, mm -hmm. um, it, it appears that one or two of them may not have enough limbs and may die in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and these are the two trees that are closest to the building uh, on the end of the line. And so, had, had we known uh, the trees would need to be trimmed so much, uh, we, at, at the beginning we would have said, could we have a couple more uh, $100 upper bodies? We would have asked that. Mm -hmm. But now that these trees might die, we're wondering if these trees could be replaced with the, with the $100 upper bodies. And I'm sure it would be either one or two trees. Mm -hmm. 
Is there room for trees to be planted now? Not on that particular spot, no. no. Yeah, one so of the things is that for. we're dealing with pine trees here. And pine trees, as you know, they grow up straight, yeah, right. and then they have these big crowns. Right. The so aphrodites he's talking about are more conical. And they, they provide screening without any, any width. Mm -hmm. So the ones behind the barn, between us and the barn that, that the holes are being dug for, are these upper vitals. And they'll make a bit of screening there and continue with our, what we've been doing for several years now, is building a green wall, a green screen of trees between us and the, the um, uh, garage area, or the parking lot, or whatever. So we've been developing this for a while, and this will extend that behind the barn. But right now, we kind of have a big hole, you know, if the trees die. That's, it, and it's not like all of them are going to die, but it really looks like because so much of the trees, these two trees, have been trimmed, they might not survive. They might not have enough foliage. That's, that's our concern. Uh, <clears throat> Clarify for me, are you suggesting that the trees, the pine trees, be taken down now and replaced? No, they might survive. Or are you waiting, yes. are you going to be yes. able to hang in there? That would be a lot of unnecessary out? work. That so would what now? Be unnecessary. Okay, because, because I, I was unclear whether yes. you were suggesting no. that happened now. Right. They, no, may, what, they may survive. They may survive this yeah, they and may. be fine. You and know, hopefully like, they yeah. will. But we're talking one, one, I, I imagine one might die. They may not die. Uh, I can't tell you if they will or not. I don't know enough about trees. But that was our, that was our uh, thought about this issue. Yeah. And the only thing that I'm thinking about is just to make sure that, that this select board knows about it and understands it and uh, commits future select boards to replacing that tree if it does die. Can we refer to that document? Yeah, I, I have a copy for you. In, in, in the minutes? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I brought copies. Because I think that that would be It's recorded, recorded too in the land Yeah, record it's certainly recorded. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because then this would give us the, uh, let's say in 10 years or whatever, they have something to look at. In the land records, you can search their names or town of Jamaica, and that'll pop up from this Great. year. So. So this, this says that they will be replaced, no matter when they die. Right. Well, no, no, no that, that doesn't. That doesn't say that. What, that. what that document says is that those trees will be left undisturbed. Okay. And they're not saying to you, don't disturb them, yes. because they understand. We understand you have to cut them because of the, the, what the damage they could do on the roof. Right. We didn't know that before, and now we know that. So what they're doing is pointing out that they're allowing it to be disturbed and asking you to commit to replacing them if they do indeed die. And we're not talking about a $900 tree. We're talking about $100. Uh, $99, $75 on sale. Uh, they're the trees that we bought, that your the town has bought for us already. So yeah. do we need to make this somewhere official? That well, it, it already is official, oh, yeah. but we just want a future select board to see that, that, that you're aware. Yeah. So essentially what we've done at this point is in minutes that anything in the future yeah. comes up should be reflected, right. referred she's, she's then to. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that is just an insurance policy. Right. Yes. Uh, we yeah. understand. You may want to keep the date of today in your file someplace. So that <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking for the video. Oh. And of course, I'm sure there are no insurance policies for trees. Yeah. No. <laughs> Get out there a little. Change policy periodically. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Anything else on the, on the garage? No, unless you have any questions. Anybody have any questions? Are we having a tour? I don't know. And how much would that tour cost? Totally okay. <laughs> wow. If you'd like, like to have an open, an open garage. <laughs> open garage party. Yeah. Yeah. If you'd like to do that, we can certainly set that up. Sweet. I, I, thought, I, I heard yeah. Larsa say something about an open house down the road. Yeah. We thought yeah. we could talk about it, yeah. yeah. We just want to make sure the fire extinguishers, uh, fire alarms do not go off. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make sure the vehicles take it in there. All right, thank you very much. Um, all right, so now let's 
let's get on some of the things we've had. We need to, um, this is mostly business stuff. It may bore you guys, but you're certainly welcome to watch how the wheels of democracy churn. Um, first order of business, we need to, we have to have the post determination here. I got a letter, that one? I got a letter from um, an attorney, and they're asking for a closed termination hearing. I'll do the names and stuff, but we all know it's to do with the the, the exercise. Uh, the part of the um, executive session we had. Um, I got another email today, or actually yesterday, uh, asking that the attorney, the DLCT attorney, asks us to provide a couple of dates. Now, I've been trying, as you all know, because you've been watching the emails go through, trying to find a date. For all of us, one day has been tricky. I put down the 21st of November, hoping that would work. And it's been hard to get us all together. I think that this hearing ought to have all the players. Um, and so that's what we've been doing. Close right now, Lex has uh, told me she's available for the 4.30 or the 6.30 time frame. I came up for 4.30 and 6.30 because they're popular times for us to have these extra meetings. But we, we can flex. Judy's not available until 4.30. No, at, not. I am available uh, up, up to, to 4:30. Up to 4:30. Okay. Right. That's right. That's right. Up to 4:30, you're okay. Yep. So 4:30 is good. 4:30 and however long no. it takes. Oh. I am, and that's not. Good I have again. to be out of the out of the house by 4:30. <laughs> and this is the 23rd. <clears throat> this is the 21st. Of the 21st. Yeah. So we need to come up with a time so I can send him an email tomorrow. Um, right off the bat, it's, it's, today is the 13th, so part of the issue is that these are both attorneys, and I'm sure they've got topics to deal with and lots of other things. So um, whether we can provide two dates or not, I don't know. Um, I do not recall seeing a top clock ticking. I think we have some time to work with, yeah, but we really ought to wrap this up as soon as possible. So you're not recommending changing the date? Well, I'm putting it out, because right now, trying to get everybody together, Right. Um, unless I guess we could invite we could invite uh, Ed and bring a birthday party. <laughs> um, so that's that. I'm I'm open it up. Lecture is pretty flexible. Um, I put down the I selected the 21st as a reasonable date, but it's certainly changeable if it seems like it to you guys. Could it be like closer to noon or two o'clock or something like that? Right? I'm flexible. Lexus says she's flexible. Yeah. He has a real and job. And he's, you and know, he's the problem. Yeah. Well, the new time is not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. I can do whatever I want. Yeah, as far as leaving work. Not if you cover the. Yeah, noon time, time it would be great for me. That'd be not a problem at all. Um, or any time. I, I can certainly ask them. My my initial thought was the lawyers are going to be busy during the day. I thought at the end of the day it was a good time. Yeah. But if we can't do it, then I'll call them and let them know. What about another? Is there another day better? Another day yeah. at the later times. Um, or do you have maybe to? next the following week? Well, that or, or sometime that week. The pick a date. Uh, the whole week's open as far as I'm concerned. It's Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, that's putting a kibosh to it. Yeah, that's why I was saying. And the day the after, probably. Week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. attorneys won't be working. No. Uh, Monday. Monday. What you know, is that? You have a board meeting mm. that night. Or do you mean the 20th? Monday the 20th, I was thinking. That's pretty yeah, cool. We can't do it the 27th. Um, so if you put it at noon, like you were saying before, on the de the, the first day, on the 21st. and the attorneys can't make it, then what? We then we, we start over again. All right. You know, I'm all for that. I don't care if you have it at 8 in the morning. So go for the 21st at, say, 1 o'clock. OK with me. OK with me. Twenty-first at one p.m. I will communicate that to them first thing tomorrow morning. And send us an email. And I'll send you guys an email as soon as I, in fact I'll copy you an email I sent out. Okay. And then as soon as I can get back, I'll let y'all know. The next one we need to set a date for is for the uh, interview of the two gentlemen we've selected mm -hmm. to be interviewed for the garage, uh, the employees for the garage. I talked to both of them. I talked to all five of them in the last week of this weekend. Mm -hmm. And they're all asking, the two gentlemen that are going to be um, uh, interviewed coming for after four, because they're, they're both actually working right now. Yeah. Um, so 
I throw that to, uh, to y'all out when what, what sounds like a reasonable time and a date to do this for after four and we're getting into the issues of everybody's schedule. This again is something we're going to do relatively soon. Um, I don't know that this is, it's a whole lot easier to set, set schedule this one than with lawyers. There's a caveat, <coughs> and that is um, Lexa and I are doing the, uh, the research on, on the references, and of course she is gone. So this week, or whenever she returns, is when she will have uh, her references. Uh, I'm still working on mine, but I can have that done by this week. So theoretically, on the 20th? I don't know when she returns. When is she coming She's back? coming back on the 19th. Oh. It's my understanding. I think that's correct. The 19th? Coming back that Sunday. Yeah, and I mean, you could, you could interview them without having called references yet, and then yeah, she could call yeah, that I, next actually, day or whatever. I, I know she was going to be working on them before she left. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. And, and mine will be completed by then. Um, so we, the 20th, so I, this would be Monday the 20th, so it's a week from tonight. Okay. At what time? At uh, 4 o'clock. Well, you guys go on at 7 o'clock, correct? Right? So sometime between then and seven, I think, and they both said after four. We could make it five, good night to get home. Whatever. How's that sound to us? So that could be time to work. Yeah. Five p.m. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. On the twentieth. The twentieth, and then five p.m. And I will call both of them and let them know. Okay. Um, Good. Um, number three, Al, this doesn't have to be in any official order, I think. I have been, I have, Keith and I have been doing a lot of research in the last couple of months on getting a sidewalk sized snowblower. The issue we've had all along has been that the snowblower that we have now, which is a pretty substantial snowblower, burns up belts because we can't handle the kind of snow that is uh, left over when the plows go through on the third grade in front of the pastas or the post office. There's two problems, two factors to that problem. Fact number one is not only do we have the snow that we get, we also have the snow that the state gives us after the snow we get has been cleared. The other part of it is in the past we had a gentleman who was working part time and so that he would not get to the snow until his other job of moving snow was done. <coughs> So therefore, sometimes it sat for a good long time before we could get to it. We believe that that may be a big chunk of why the belts kept failing. So if we can get on it right away. So Keith has a plan to get on it right away so that we will be using another individual whose time is um, our own and we can respond within reasonable uh, time frame. I'm saying that because I have been all over the internet. I've talked to three or four different companies. I've had them send me literature trying to find a non-belt driven snow plow or snow blower that will fit on these sidewalks and make it between the trees and the gardens or between the gardens and the curb has been very, very difficult. Uh, read almost impossible. I found one used snow blower used as in 212 hours, which is pretty small. It has the right size 42 inch blower. We have 48 inch sidewalks, so the 40, 42 inch blowers will, will keep it in there. It is um, available because it's at Brown's, unless he sold it to me. Uh, it also has a, a deck for mowing and it's got a, um, a little cart for uh, blowing and collecting grass and it looks like a little trigger. At any rate, I've been dialing around, calling around, and the new ones are in the anywhere between fifteen and thirty thousand dollars. These are sidewalk machines. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they're really nice. And there's some slick ones, and there's videos on the internet, and, you can, and there are really some nice ones. But that's a lot of money because even they are have belts. So now we're the, the real issue we've been trying to get the what the, the equipment we have now is really nice snowblower. It's really really good shape, except it blows belts. So now we're juggling the between 15 and 30, and I've got literature, it's on the internet, plenty of stuff we've done. I've looked at Kubota and Massey Ferguson and 
simplicity and, I don't know, two or three others. Wasted way too much of my time in the last two or three months looking at stupid snowblowers. But you know what snowblowers are like now. I don't. That's <laughs> information I'm going to forget just as quickly as you want to give it to Keith. But in any case, there is, as we speak, this morning when I spoke, a snowblower in, uh, at Brown's. It's a used snowblower. It's got 212 hours. It's a tractor. It's four-wheel drive. It's got chains. It's got a mowing deck. Like I just said, it's got the trailer for the leaf catching, whatever it's called. 42-inch uh, auger. How much? Oh, getting to that, I think of one more thing I was going to say. It's $5,800. And this morning he tells us he will give us $1,000 trade in for the snowblower that we can't use. Guaranteed. Uh, guaranteed. He know, they sold it to us, so he had the paperwork in front of him. And he asked how many hours, and I said, continuous? No, no, guarantee on the new machine. Oh, no, there's no warranty it's used. No warranty, that's correct. Oh, that warranty, no. There's no warranty on the used machine. However, it has been fixed up. We, Keith and I got out, went out there and ran it up, and it worked really well. Um, and no belts on that. It is belt driven. That's okay. the thing. If it wasn't belt driven, so those big machines are belt driven. driven. Well, here's the thing. The they belt driven shear, shear pins and belts. Yeah, that's what was breaking. A lot of pins. So pins and the belt. Those yeah, shear, shear, shear pins and belts. We have one at home that we have used for years, yeah. and that's what, if it's going to break, it's always a shear pin. But shear pins are set up to go. Turn. But you know, since I live on one of those sidewalks, they get to be like glare ice. It's, it's awful. They get to be like really. You mean eyes. it doesn't do the job? The snowblower won't, it won't take it. If it's not removed very quickly, the you gotta get out quickly, exactly. And that's the problem we've run into. I mean, even with a big, serious industrial strength walk behind snowblower, the um, state beat us. But part of it, as you said, is because we don't get on it right away. So we're gonna make some changes. We, is gonna, we've got some personnel things that we can do to get people on it within a couple of hours. I think. There's nothing that can be put on a on a road machine the way they do mowing off the side. With that wouldn't work for the strip right here in front of the um, mud because, the, because, of, because of the mall. Well, not so much because of the trees. And and they're the other stuff. That's the other thing. I did find one that is not belt driven. It's uh, PTO driven, but it's on the back. And the guy said, that's no problem. You can look over your shoulder. Well, you're not going to run that backwards the whole length of town between trees and people's yards. So that's out. But the belt thing is another thing to me, and I've learned a lot more than I wanted to learn about snowblowers. But the business with the belt has to do with protecting the PTO. If it gets so bad that it's going to break the belt, that beats the heck out of breaking the PTO. PTO is a power, tur power takeoff. So, on these kinds of machines, it's extremely difficult to find one. So, here's where we are tonight. I mean, I could keep looking, but the snow's flying. We got a $5,800 offer for what appears to Keith and I to be a very uh, reasonable, let me back one second. Every other dealer I talk to, do you have any used ones? Not anymore, not right now. I got one coming in, but they don't last. This has been here a week or so, so the clock may be ticking on this one. I mean, we don't want to buy a really good one. I mean, I've been on the board for a few years now and we have this discussion every single year. What do you think? I, don't, I haven't researched them, but I know like the ones in Brattleboro, they're not $5,000 machines. They're no. like 10 grand. No, what if I thousand? Closer to 30, because I was talking to the vet tech rep today. I know it's in there. Yeah. And he said that they've got some in Brattleboro, but they love them, and they're great. They're articulated. Right. They do all this wonderful stuff. They work. Brattleboro's got more than a mile and a half of sidewalk. They probably have more than 10 miles of sidewalk. Well, uh, my point is all we have is miles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and so, yeah, they've got a bigger budget. And they, and they pay those people more, by the way. Anyhow, so we're kind of stuck in a, in a quandary here because we need to do something pretty soon. And we can cross our fingers for only so long because now I've stopped praying for 80 degrees. I've started working on the snow conditions. <laughs> so we're, we're going to see some snow. Yeah. The idea, though, is do we want to, as a, as a group, 58, probably 48 with the, with the thing, and it will cost us between three and eight hundred, depending on what we can find it, to get a cat. This one doesn't have a, a little cat, the heated cat thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we ought to do that. Yes. But it depends on where we get it. If we buy it from direct from manufacturers, eight hundred. If we buy it uh, aftermarket, it can be down between three and five. 
but it's going to cost us a few hundred bucks. So if it's 4805 it's going to be close to $6,000 to get this thing. Um, doesn't require any mechanical work. Everything's been tuned up. It's ready to go right now. It'll be just cold. I um, move that we uh, buy the uh, snowblower uh, with the attachments um, at, what's the price? Brown. With uh, Mr. Brown. Yeah, it's the one up on, on that London area or South London area? South London area. Yeah, South London, London area. For what price? For, it's um, 58 and the, uh, today he said he'd give me a thousand for the other one, so the person got a 48. You got all of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, I'll second that. And we have a second. Do we have any further discussion? Just that if this thing starts breaking and doesn't work, that we should look into a bigger machine. Go the distance. Yeah. yeah. One of the things on that very topic. They told us that last one would do it. Yeah, I know. And now we're dealing with them again. And they're telling us this one will do it. And they're giving us a thousand bucks for the one we paid four thousand. Well, twenty seven bucks. We paid twenty seven for the yeah. thing. And it doesn't have hardly any hours on it, if you ask me. Probably not a Which lot one? of the one, one we have. One that we have. Yeah. That's all the discussion I have about. It. Yeah, and I think it's a good point, and I think it's a very reasonable point. We have a, a, enough nice. sidewalk to invest in a more expensive machine later, but we Twice. probably should buy something like that in the summertime. I kind concur. Of, kind of, they're a little short right now. Uh, and, yeah. And expensive. <laughs> well, the so another buying a snowmobile right now. Yeah. You better to buy one. Well, there's another little piece that you want. <laughs> Speaking exactly to your point, that's all. That's all I had to say. Well, I think that's a good point because one of the things we looked at was this machine is perfect for lots of things, not necessarily running next to Route 30. Consequently, because nobody can keep a used machine on lot long enough for Paul Fraser to find it, my suspicion is if we blow belts on this one, we'll be able to get rid of it pretty quickly because apparently they're a pretty hot commodity. So my feeling is exactly like yours. If this doesn't work, we're gonna to have to spring for some bigger bucks. And there's some really cute ones out there that really would be expensive, but they'd be perfect for what we have. But they're, we're talking twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And those are belt driven too. And that's belt driven as well. Yeah, but they're, that's a whole different deal. Well, it's a bigger deal, yeah. Bigger, bigger, heavier. Why? You're smiling. Well, you're just gonna invest $30,000 to, to plow a mile worth of crop. Of, 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 so well, you could shovel it. I could shovel it. Someone could shovel it. Well, in fact, I should make sure. Someone could shovel it. Well, I, I, you know, I'm just looking at you know, the, 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 the return on investment. Uh, you know, and not, not, not to, uh, I'm not disagreeing with Judy and you, Paul, but uh, in the future, if the, as Andy says, if this doesn't work, we got to go up to thirty grand. I think you should think twice about that. This was kind of mandated by FEMA when we took their money for the sidewalks. Well, we that, we, that we're we responsible to take care of them. Yeah. So we, it's, we don't have an elective. We just have to do it the most economical. Well, I know Whitmall contracts are out to. I mean, they don't have as much sidewalk, but but um, Homestead does. I mean, look at putting the burden of the machine onto somebody else. I mean, just down the road. I mean, I again don't agree, disagree with what you're saying now, but down the road, I don't think we should just go get, 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 and have a. That, that may be a smart move because an awful lot of the people who are giving me um, uh, the, the, just the little accolades that they give their professional contractors talking about how great these pieces of equipment are. Of course, they're making money with the equipment. We're just trying to keep people from getting slight, slipping and sliding. One other piece of business in the discussion I talked to the young man who did it for us the last two years. And I asked him if he's interested in doing it again this year. He says, not without equipment. But he did it by shovel. A lot, yeah, a lot of it was by shovel, you know, because he couldn't get the machine to do the job. Now, truthfully, he had another job moving snow, so he didn't get to us until sometimes the next day. And it day. was there for a while. Yeah, it was a while. It it was really, a while. You really need to get out during the storm. Well, in fact, Keith has that. He's got a, the way he's using his pre ball this year. We're going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I just. Made a comment. That's it. Was it. Was like, it. And I didn't say fifteen grand or thirty grand. I just said if this thing turns into a like, I'm not going to say it again. So right. I, I'm ready to like vote on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so all in favor of um, Keith and I contracting for this fifteen hundred dollar machine, say aye. 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 
time. I have three I's. And in A's, well, Keith will be happy. I will be happy. I'm sick of calling. This is an end. <laughs> this is going to end up being an end job. This is another piece of equipment that has to go into the garage. Is there room for it? Yes, thankfully. It's a little piece of equipment in a big garage. You can put it in my garage. You can put it in your garage. It's right handy right there. So we ought to find out what it costs also to contract it out. And the carbon dioxide is sure to set off the alarms. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. The next item of business is um, we recently received, I think we mentioned once before, a letter of resignation that Lexa is not, no longer the road commissioner. So we need to appoint a new road commissioner. And I have talked to Andy, and Andy has stepped up to the plate and is willing to take on the position of road commissioner. Um, Shouldn't we put this out for the same kind of bids to non-select board members? I don't think so. I think we need to get somebody on board really quickly. I don't think we want to. Well, we, can, we can temporize it and then not do it under pressure. Do you want to make that a motion? I think we should move on it. We have somebody. Well, another. The, if you read the the law on it, and I'm not advocating for myself, but I think that if someone from the outside. There's two ways. We we could appoint them, or they could be elected at the town meeting. Do you want to do this? Yeah, I looked it up. It's no big deal unless you make it a big deal. <laughs> it's not that much. It's I, not. A, no, I mean my, the commissioner himself. I see it as a big deal to be the road commissioner. It's a big, the job it's a description. Job. No, it's not. That's that's not what my experience is looking at. Have you been road commissioner before? No, no. I do you want one? Do you want no, 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 I don't want to do it. I, I read the job description. I, I read, the, I read the statutes, and I'm prepared for the five or six people who call anyway to call in and ask me about the roads. You kind of have them. to go around and look at the roads and submit for. Um, I, I read the job description. Submit for um, uh, what do you call it? Grants. And, um, Improvement projects. That's all under the orange book and all of that. Were you road commissioner at all? Yeah, it was. Yeah, but a couple big things you have, as you were just alluding to, there are grants that, that somebody has to prepare, and I, I prepare those grants. There are a lot of grants. Um, a lot of roads. And the other thing is that uh, when people uh, need to have access to the road from their property, you have to go up and look at it. Usually, you take Keith with you and uh, evaluate the uh, the best location for that access. And you know, be, and then of course you have to look, you know, be aware of problems and right. discuss problems. And I didn't get too many uh, calls. Maybe over the year that I was road commission, got four or five calls. So you, I didn't get a whole lot of complaints. But you work closely with the. With Keith, with the with Keith, right? You talk to Keith all the time. <clears throat> right. Find out what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The biggest thing I remember being board commissioner is the buffer between Keith and the, and the select board. That's what I read. Being the right. right. Yeah. <clears throat> it didn't. It didn't. What I read didn't say that I was responsible personally for applying for grants. No, and the, and that's because we don't have a town manager. And that's the reason why I took up that burden. If we had a town manager. That or a, a town, uh, what do they call them, assistant? Then that person usually is the one that applies for grants on behalf of the town. But because we don't have an administrative assistant, then I did it for that. I think Julie did it for right. some right. things. Right. Others of us have done it for other things. Right. Right. Luckily, we have a team. Uh, our our treasurer and our our town clerk are a pretty good team. She's scowling at me. It's a pretty good no, team I need for help. Yeah. If I'm going to be roped into she's like she's not scowling. Uh, she's just. <laughs> You know, being responsible. I mean, I could get some help with it, but I've I've never done anything like that. But I certainly could. It's you know, funny I could, help. I could do the rest of it. Yeah, we're always available to help out. The team effort. I like the idea of having actually the member of the select board be uh, that in that role. Just as I think it's important that. I, me being in the role of uh, transfer station supervisor. I think that 
because it, we have direct access to make some decisions. And that adds having another person makes it another step before it comes to the board. I like this communication. Is there anyone in the gallery who would like to take a shot at the road commissioner? I know there are people who would do it. Well, but that, that's why I suggest we put it out for bid the same way we put out um, the planning commission seat. But I would not be against you doing it. You can always seek support from those other people just to help with grants. Right. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yes. You guys know anybody who works on grants? Yes. We'd love to have them. Works on what? Grants. Grant applications? Yeah, things like that yeah. can be helped by the uh, Wyndham, Wyndham Regional people. Exactly. They've been helpful. Sure, we have, I know someone who has written grants for us also before. Uh, I don't want to mention that person's name, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I know that. But That's I know incredible. I've spoken to Wyndham Regional people who mm -hmm. But this that. person lives in town. We, we well, can. I wouldn't be against, you know, if someone else would want to take a shot at it, but I'd like to, you know, follow the select board's wishes. I, I'll make myself available for it if the board wants to. Do we to. need a motion? I think we should. Okay, Just. I move that Andy Coyne be um, appointed road commissioner for the town of Jamaica. I'll second that. Okay, so quick discussion. Can we put a time frame just to fill uh, until the, to to fill out the remainder of Lex's term, and that um, if or my term or your term or your term right now this year? I don't think so. I think I might have one year left. Oh, you yeah. could be here yeah. forever. Yes, one year. Would you would you want to do that until yes. until March? I think I okay. have, we have to. Good. And then yeah. we could revisit that with a with an election if necessary. Okay. So if I'm not uh, fired by then. then <laughs> 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 so you I, I amend my uh, motion to include uh, the length of his term. Uh, all in favor of the amendment to the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The motion is amended to reflect that the term of service will be until uh, time meeting day. Right. All in favor of the amended motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Especially for the guy who's been doing the job for the last couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Really? Yes. Not bad? No, it's not that bad. <laughs> I finished most of the stuff. Um, okay. Now, um, you said that you have a report on a connectivity seminar that you have brief. Yep. Okay, we're going to hit that for us. Sure. I went to a conference in Dover on November 1st entitled Connectivity Summit, which was sponsored by the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, the BDCC, under a program called SEBEDS, uh, which I don't know how to pronounce. Seven. 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 That's one way to pronounce it. And that's um, Southeast Vermont uh, um, Economic Development Seminar System. <laughs> or, or more than one. At any rate, this was the second in a series of conferences on economic development for town leaders. There were representatives from both Vermont federal senators and the House um, representative. Clay Purvis was there from the Vermont Department of Public Service and a representative was there from the USDA. The focus of this conference was economic development through increase in communications through broadband services, including DSL, cable, and fiber optic. The increase in broadband service is seen to be one of the greatest needs from the, perspect from the perspective of local town governments in Vermont. The cost is high. It costs about $35,000 a mile to lay fiber optic cable. Currently, DSL provides speeds of four megs download and one meg uplet. And DSL is what's Fairpoint, it's copper wire. Cable is rated at 25 download and three upload and fiber is rated at 100 and 100. Currently the state will require speeds of 10 to one, so DSL doesn't really even reach that. Progress will be slow in achieving an increase in universal speed and towns seeking these higher speeds are frustrated by the costs 
but see a need to increase the potential of education and local business growth, essentials to keeping the population youthful, employed, and growing. And I have some papers from them, which I'll share with Pam. That'll be available to say. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This dovetails with one of the things you added to the uh, town plan about increasing the uh, Okay, the next thing we had, um, the health officer about burning the barge. Yes, I, I also serve as Jamaica's town health officer, and I may uh, take the state up on some material or information that should be posted. Uh, just to say out loud, open burning of trash is never allowed in Vermont, any kind of trash. And then to get into the permits for burning wood and all of that, you, you can't have a barrel out back and burn your garbage or anything else, any painted wood. I mean, a lot of people do. Some people are complaining to me, and I informally complaining about garbage burning, you know, wafting through the village. And it does, it's a terrible odor, and it's, it's illegal. And if I ask you to stop, and, and, you, and you don't stop, there can be penalties levied by me or, or other... Uh, Still folk. Uh, I, I don't think the fire warden can, but... Um, I could give you a ticket. I don't want to do that. I just want people to stop burning trash openly in a burn barrel or any painted wood or anything like that. So if you'd like some more information on what you can burn and what you can't burn, call the office and I'll, I'll have one of the girls get a hold of me and give you the information. But, uh, can you burn anything in, in an open in a barrel at all? It's just clean wood. Clean wood only. Unpainted. Unpainted, Unpainted not clean wood. Sure. And then for something, yeah, I don't know for a barrel, but you may need to call the fire warden to even do that. I don't know. It, it seems a little much to call to ask to use your burn pit, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about garbage, even in your wood soap. It's illegal. It's hard to prove, but the air pollution. Like Most of you said you could seek information of it. Yeah, so I can, I can get but I think things it's to worthwhile. Post. And I think that transfer station is a great place. I mean, not everybody comes into the town hall here, but everybody's up there every other week or something, and there should be just a little bit more community, like public awareness of issues like that? I just, they just issued a page of, of, of how to do that from the state, how to make people more Yeah, because Dan can um, <clears throat> pass those things out, and, and we also have a bulletin board up there. Right. So. And I have some good direction on how to get the word out without having to be... Uh, you know, I don't want to come to your door and tell you to stop burning garbage out back or, or, you know, have a complaint and have to go to your house. And I know everybody in town, and, and, I mean, it's part of the job, but it's unnecessary because it's against the law. I think you can reduce your uh, the stuff you put in green bags tremendously if you um, compost. Uh, yeah, well, that came out. According um, to the news. I'm hoping people got those. When I get to those barrels, they're relatively empty, and you can put most of your garbage that's got food contamination, wax containers mm -hmm. in there paper and plates, not have to pay towel. for bags for that. Mm -hmm. So you reduce your garbage load significantly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, on the subject of burning, I'll just slide in. <clears throat> Please put some numbers where we can find them. The fire department on the way by, because we don't want to miss you. Miss you not too long, too. I don't know. It's just it, the, so. the reality is when we're going someplace in the middle of the night and we can't find you, that is not the time. Anyway, no. Once again, um, that's all I have. Now you had mentioned the idea of an executive session regarding the water plant. I would like to wait for Alexa to come back. Then I would propose that we set up a special meeting for as soon as possible, perhaps next week or maybe the week after, to have this. And this meeting would only be to choose between the three contractors who 
presented to us, mm -hmm. not to decide on doing anything further, that we would have a special town meeting for and let the town make that decision. We, we decided to do that. Decided that. So that's what we said tonight. Yeah, yes. so we, we looked at the dates today, and if you waited till the next meeting, real regular select board meeting on the 27th, and chose someone on that day, that would still give us over a week to come up with a warning and post it in time to have a vote that first week or second week of January, like we had discussed. That's okay with me. We as long have as, enough as long time. As we, we follow through on that. Yep. That we have time to have a meeting to discuss these three contractors. Yep. And mm -hmm. and then it has to the vote as to which one has to be in public. Yep. Not the not the executive session, but the vote to decide which one has to be in public. Would that be the well, you that would happen in January? No, no. No, that well, would, you, she's talking about then uh, an informational meeting on what they decide. I think we... 7th and 9th, I oh, know, no. The 3rd and the 9th of January, yeah. the 3rd yeah. would be the info meeting and the 9th would be the vote itself. Yeah. But you can have your executive session at the next select board meeting and then and come out of executive time. session and vote okay. on who you're going to go with. Okay. So, so the only reason we're picking... I'm sorry, go ahead. I just want to know, January, would that be the final decision of whether it's a go to no, do no. the water or not to go? To do the feasibility. Gotcha. And this just gets I think that really needs to be very clear yes. because it sounds almost like we're voting that yeah, we're starting we to. We are sort of moving board. ahead by picking someone before we have the information we need, if you ask me. That one kind of got by me at the, the last time we discussed this. I thought we were just going to ask the town if they wanted us to look into the, the feasibility study. Now we're talking about picking someone. We're talking about selecting of the three yes, contracts. Yes, I know. And that we have to do at executive session. That's a contract. Before we ask the Before town we if they want the to have a feasibility And I study. think that we can, we can logically decide between the three people who made the presentation. And I think that's that we moving can, ahead without we, asking. It's okay. not moving ahead. We you want to do that, that if you guys want to do that. Well, we that's, we're not saying anybody. Money. No, I know that. I know that. Who would present the info then at the, at the information meeting? Well, the, the contractor that we selected. Right, that's right. Plus that's any right. other sources of information that we could get. There's a yeah. person at state who, talk, who can talk about funding. Yeah, I'm not trying to include this yeah, decision sure. here, but I think at that information meeting, you need to have a that's a right. very significant right. presentation and not just you guys yes. sitting up there and answering Absolutely. a couple of questions. Absolutely. Um, and, and I don't think that the select board, even though we could vote to go ahead with the feasibility study, I don't think that would be appropriate. Exactly. It's a big plan and taking the first step should be in the town's uh, purview, not in our purview, mm -hmm. even though we are technically legally able to do that. Right. I don't think well, that, that was the one yeah. thing that uh, uh, Otter Creek guy told us. Take the town Bring with you every on step every yeah. step. After we hire them to do the study. But we not before. Hire. We're not hiring him at the select board. No, that's what he just said. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand what we're doing. All right, so then we're in agreement. What we will do then is on um, next select board meeting, which is scheduled to be the 27th of November, we will have an executive session at which time we will review. Now, are you uh, in a position to give us a little bit of a, maybe a comparative spreadsheet for these things since you're the water guru at this? All of a sudden, yes. Oh, sure. you've been watering. Sure. I've been watering for years. Yes, yes, you have. Sure. But just something so we can compare them. Because sure. they're, 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 sure. they don't read real clear. No. Clear I, you know what? I'll do the best I can. I'll even make phone calls to them if I have to. But I think we're not going to know until they do the feasibility study, which is why we want to do this sure. much less expensive step before we hire someone to do the expensive step. Okay. And I think that, that just having some basic ideas, because each one of them presented a little bit differently how yes. they're going to do the feasibility study. Yes. So that would be useful. Okay, good. If you could do that, that would help us a lot. Excellent. Are we in agreement? Yes. Uh, we're all in no. agreement? No. You guys go ahead. What? I'm against it. You are against going into executive session at the next meeting. Oh, how's that to do it? I'd rather not do it. You can ask to do that at the next meeting. That won't give us enough time then to have... Well, you guys can vote on it then. 
Okay. But it doesn't even need to be an executive session. No, we can no, do it. Something. We don't have it to has do to an be, executive. It has to be an executive session when we're deciding between contractors. Because otherwise, you're... Um, but the discussion can still be outside of executive session. You don't have to be in executive session. You can choose to, to have it outside of executive to, session. To discuss, maybe, I'm not... To discuss, to discuss which one of these. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, but again, I, I think um, that was one of the things that we learned when the lawyer was here, is that we, a lot of the things that we can do can be done in open session, okay. that we do not have to go. I do think that we have an option. I, for one, think anytime we're dealing with contracts, that, um, that ought to be done in an executive session. So we, we do one of the reasons that you discuss these things in executive session is so that one contractor doesn't know the price of the other contractors. So it doesn't give the second one to hear the conversation. No, agreed. All right. Yeah, again, but we I'm already sorry, have sorry. their right. estimate for this. So technically, it, there would be no advantage to them for, for being hidden. Yeah. yeah, they know what it is. Right. We already know. We know because we have the reports from each group. Yeah. Right. And you can even make your decision the on decision the dollars to within the executive up. session. The but the discussion prior, all the nuts and bolts. If, the, if it's the town's pleasure, pleasure to heal or all of that, I'm not against that. Just I don't know, they'd think that we could read the numbers and vote now, but they are different. Significantly different presentations. They're not all apples and oranges. Yeah. Exactly. And then I'll, I'll have more than that. That needs to be hashed out. Yeah. And I think in the interest of, uh, I don't want to say secrecy, but the corporates, they have they have a right to expect some degree of confidentiality, confidentiality or at least privilege. But that ought to be done in, in uh, nothing personal cameras, but it ought to be done in an executive session. And then we will come out and announce or then vote. But as far as hashing out, trying to make the apples and oranges and bananas all look into one thing, I, I, would, I would agree that the executive session would be. Yeah, well, I mean, that's your so, so yeah. at the next, so at that meeting, at the next select board meeting, we'll bring up the conversation of the three contractors. We'll vote on whether or not to go into executive session. And then either way, we'll discuss the three contractors and then we'll vote on which one we would choose to possibly provide a, a feasibility study which the town will vote on. Mm -hmm. Which the town will vote on doing it or not doing it. Right. That will be the town's pleasure. Right. Doing <clears throat> doing the feasibility study. Right. Not doing the project. Just doing right. the feasibility study. Right. We're always talking about feasibility study. Very one, clear. one step at a time. <laughs> all righty then. Do you have all that? I think you covered it all. I hope so. Seventeen times. <laughs> um, let me check real quick. Make sure I've got everything covered for everybody. Public concerns. Do you have some concerns? No. I, 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 I have something that I'd like yeah. to just as Public a suggestion. What's that? Um, I think it would be a good idea if we brought a conference phone so that when we didn't have a full compliment, someone who was not here could participate. We have that. We've yeah. done that here before. But but they make one that works. I know, but this one works. <laughs> <laughs> I have the skin in there. Well, well, in that, uh, so that's what I think. One that's made for the purpose of networks. However, where everybody can hear everybody, not holding up a phone. But if that's the pleasure of the select board, that's okay with me. What, the one up on the emergency management desk, that. I yeah. Right there. yeah, 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 that works like that. So we can we use that. that. Yeah, yeah, we can use that. Yeah, we can go right into here. But I think that we ought to uh, use it as policy. Are you talking about absent select board members? Yeah. Do they have to be here? No, no. 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 The only, the only. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't know whether there was some. So far, the, the only, only thing you have to do is any vote has to be uh, polled. You have poll. to poll for every vote. Exactly. And and they have to be here for the whole meeting. You can't just call in for a, a vote. So that person has to be here for the whole meeting. And um, wink, wink, somebody said to me, well, if they lose the connection, that's OK. But, um, <laughs> but technically, they have to be here for the whole meeting. They can't just pop in for a vote. But I think that should become something that we do when we're in a situation like this, where an important member of the select board isn't here. 
Well, it's certainly something to consider for the next absentee. We'll talk about making that work. And we, um, I, I plan on being the next absentee. If we have, we have the phone. So if we have the phone, we can just bring it down here. We have the technology. We wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got, we've got the technology. Great. We'll consider that the next time somebody is absent. Great. Alexa was on the phone. She would make a motion to adjourn right now. <laughs> Sorry. Three times over. <laughs> I would have missed that motion from Alexa Surgeon. I so move. I have a motion to move to adjourn the meeting. Hold on, sir. No, wait. Oh, second. Oh, public concerns? Yeah, public concerns. I apologize. <laughs> I jumped right. I missed the public concern. We have a public hiding behind uh, the book site, the uh, first planning commission. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd just like to understand if you can clarify for me. You're interviewing two people for the. Uh, Positions in the town garage. That's correct. Right. Are they replacement or add-ons? Replacement. So you're losing two people. No, no. Well, I'm interviewing two people to select one. Uh, interviewing two to select one of them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You may adjourn now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we were saying, I apologize for. for, for I think of you as family. I don't think of you as public. Uh, there's a motion to adjourn. We have a second. All in favor, oh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned and it's 26 minutes after 8 o'clock.